Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of AFL from LA. I'm your host, Cindy, and we're here at beautiful Echo Park Lake. It's 60 degrees, and it's another windy one for you, so bear with me and my hair. I'd like to thank all of our new friends over in Oz and here in the U.S. who have liked us and made comments. We really appreciate you guys checking us out and liking what we're doing. But there is one comment I'd like to address. It seems that my sources were in question, and I'd like to say that my psychic I mean, my sources are the most trustworthy in the business. I know that I'm American, and I know that we Americans have a loose relationship with the truth, but I promise you, I would never intentionally mislead you, unless, of course, it's for a good joke. So many of my American fans have been patiently waiting to find out what is AFL. And you may have seen my friend Monica's interpretation of it this past week. So the game is played on an oval. It's not unlike a football field, except it's much bigger. It has goalposts at either end, except on this game, you have a goalpost in the middle that you can get six points or two to either side where you can gain one point. They do play with an oval ball that looks a lot like a football, but it is bigger and it is heavier. There are 18 players on the field for each team. That's 36 in total. That's a lot of good looking men to look at. I mean, every flavor that you could imagine. Tall, short, big, skinny, brawny, you name it, it's there for your enjoyment. This game is played with no padding, unlike American football. There's kicking, there's running, there's tackling, there's passing, but it's underhand as opposed to overhand. There are four 20-minute quarters, and I'm telling you, these stadiums hold 80 to 100,000 people, and at most games, they're fairly packed. So here are a few footy terms that might come in handy if you start watching the game. So a soccer, that's when you kick the ball along the ground. A mark, which is a catch. We have a behind, which is one point, and a goal, which is six points. Sometimes they call goals majors. Courage is a word you'll hear often. And what does that mean? That's when you're willing to go for the ball at any cost, even when there's a freight train of other players from the other team coming at you to tackle you. Game one of the round this week was the Western Bulldogs against the Brisbane Lions. And I'll be honest, we were expecting a lot from the Lions after the whipping they gave to the Demons last week. The Bulldogs somehow pulled it off. Adam Treloar and Rory Lobb were back. Rory Lobb apparently did have surgery, although he came back with his hair looking perfect, and I'm starting to wonder if surgery is another way of saying hair appointment. Can somebody please explain to me what holding the ball is, or in fact holding the man? There were so many calls that made no sense. It had my head spinning. You know, this year they've added a fourth umpire to the game, and it doesn't seem to be helping because it seems like they're all playing from different rule books. Collingwood versus Richmond. We had a few players out. Dusty Martin, for example, was out for the Richmond team. Mason Cox was out for Collingwood. But don't worry, they had three Nick Dacoses. Try Bolton. He smartly went back to his natural hair color. Coincidence? I think not. You're welcome, ladies. So has anybody noticed Camden McIntosh's approach when doing a set shot? He has a sneaky little smile on his face. Unfortunately, it didn't help him get the goal, but it was actually quite precious. And don't get me started on Toronto's terrible kicking this week. So Hawthorne and North Melbourne had a bye this weekend. Oh, wait, no, they were just playing in Tasmania. The 12 people that were at the game will let us know how it went. Just kidding, the 16 people that were at the game will let us know how it went. All jokes aside, it was a big game for the rivalry between Master and Apprentice. Hawks finally notch another win, and Clarko's disdain for Sam Mitchell goes up a whole notch as well. GWS Carlton. First, a shout out to my new friend Terry, at Blue Abroad. It was a great game. Unfortunately, my second favorite team, GWS, just couldn't get over the mark. It was a hard-fought win, but seriously, how was that not a free kick? The umpire's sensitivity here is completely out of control. I watched 10 other examples of what could have been called dissent in other games that were not called. The umpires, you need to do better. Carlton's terrible record at Giants Stadium almost continued, and they were helped out by my boy Toby, who had his lowest disposal game ever. That's okay, Tobes, you're still a superstar, and as Gary Lyon said, a genius. St. Kilda versus Essendon. What can I say? Those old-timey jumpers with the collars gave them superpowers. And having the Hulk as your number one fan doesn't hurt either. Hi, Eric. Essendon put up a fight, but the Saints kept marching in. Yes, that's right. Their winning song is the Saints Go Marching In. 
one of many songs they rip off from us Americans. Higgins and Butler both scored four goals apiece, and now Ross the Boss has them sitting at the top of the ladder after three rounds. Can they keep it up? So round three featured the two big interstate derbies, which was great because it finally gave the Victorians a chance to turn off the TV and go outside and get some fresh air. Port Adelaide versus Adelaide. What started out as a pretty exciting and even game turned horribly wrong for Port Adelaide. 20-year-old Riley Thilthorpe stepping in for Fogarty and scoring five goals certainly didn't help. Star recruit Isaac Rankin scored four goals and had 17 disposals. Port have now conceded 40 goals goals in the last two games. Ken Hinckley, I have questions. Gold Coast versus Geelong. So listen, I'm the first one to say, never count the old men of Geelong out. But after this week's game, I'm starting to think maybe it's time for them to hit the retirement home. They're now at the bottom. Oh, and three. How the mighty have fallen. Gold Coast finally rose to the occasion, giving them their first win of the season. Wondering if Geelong is thinking about picking up Joel Selwood in the midseason draft. Props to Jack Lacocious, the midfielder turned forward, who bagged five goals this week. Way to go, Lacocious. By the way, hottie of the week, Lockie Weller. 29 disposals. I don't know how this guy wasn't on my radar, but believe me, he is now. Sydney versus Melbourne. It was Sydney's first trip back to the MCG after the horror show of the grand final of last year. And I tell you, today was not much better. What a huge disappointment for Swans fans. With Max gone out, Brody Grundy stood up this week with 21 disposals, 25 hitouts, and four clearances. Max gone, who was still up in Brisbane this week helping the police with the investigation of the Gabba light saga, is still maintaining that he had nothing to do with it. Likely story. West Coast Eagles against Frio. Poor Eagles. Frio had to win it or they were going to a 0-3 record. And the Eagles were hoping to go to a 2-1 record after their great win last week against GWS. It was a real demolition derby, with Eagles being reduced to friends, family, and Simo's mom. And Liam Ryan forced to play on one leg. Million dollar recruit Luke Jackson finally scored a couple goals and took a couple marks. Clearly not getting their money's worth yet. Maybe something's finally starting for Luke Jackson. So Michael Walters kicked four goals and only one of them was from ducking his head. Caleb Sarong won the medal this week with 35 possessions, 16 of which were contested. And Tommy Barras took nine marks. Welcome back, Tommy. I'm glad to see that you and the missus hired a night nurse since you got your new addition to the family. You clearly hadn't been sleeping. So it looks like the Eagles may be out seven players for next week's game against the Melbourne Demons. That's right, the Melbourne Demons. God help us.